Yes, that's the great sounds from Alexander O'Neill coming out of the Flight Time Studios. And a great singer always has to have some great musicians alongside, keeping company with him. And one of the great musicians and producers who Alexander O'Neill has worked with is my special guest right now, Stanley Chance Howard, who is uh, many of you know as the keyboardist and vocalist uh, with The Time. And he's a musician who... uh, Hails from Minnesota. He's working out there now, and we talked with Kirk Johnson just a few moments ago about uh, working together with Chance Howard. And today's a really exciting day for me because we finally have on the upper room Chance Howard. How you doing, Chance? I'm doing good, buddy. How you doing, man? All right. Good, and, good. Uh, great to hear hear that flavor you were on working with Jelly Bean and the keys with uh, Alexander O'Neill. Oh you, yeah. re- you remember the recording? Um, what things were like on that song? Yeah, yeah, it was cool, man. Um, me and Bean were we were in the studio, and they were saying they wanted more of a um, sort of like another criticize, mm-hmm. you know, for this next uh, for this next record because criticize was one of his one of Alex's biggest records. So you know, they had us come in, and and uh, Bean had this idea for this bass line, and and uh, I just laid it down, and then I just went from there. You know, and just started laying it down. So it was real funky, man. It was yeah. real funky. And Alex came in and did his thing, and there you go. That was it. Yeah, and, so. and there we go. And one of the best tracks, uh, Alex, in my opinion, has ever has ever done. So. Oh man, thank yeah. you, thank you. So, so you, uh, we were talking before a couple of weeks ago about uh, about your upbringing, originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Pittsburgh, PA, man. Yeah. How, how did you um, get this musical bug into you back then? Wow, I don't know, man. It was, it, I'd say, you know, I mean, I was, I was just put into it. My my dad, uh, God rest his soul. He he was um, he was an organ player uh, and a vocalist. He had his own choir. Uh, my brother was a guitar player, um, you know, and singer and writer and producer everything and I basically just looked up to those guys you know more than anything and they just kind of just geared me into it pretty much I mean you know how could you not be into it if if you you know if your brother's playing every day and then your dad is you go and see your dad playing like every Sunday at church and you know stuff like that so it just kind of just uh just kind of fell on fell on my shoulders so Mm-hmm. It was all good, man. It was definitely all good. Well, were you a uh, classically trained school trainer? You just picked it up um, being around the family. Picked it up all by ear. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, I went to uh, I went to a high school for the creative and performing arts in uh, in Pittsburgh uh, from my ninth to twelfth twelfth uh, year in high school. But um, uh, I mean, I mainly knew everything everything that I knew. I pretty much knew. Most of it went by the time I got to high school, you know, and uh, and then from there I went to, you know, putting together bands and, and stuff like that and experimenting with, with different bands and, you know, because I was mostly writing up in my room, you know. I was like 12 years old writing songs, you know, in my bedroom and stuff just with my bass, you know, and then uh, when I got to high school, Started, I started messing around with, you know, uh, different sounds, and you know, there was like a piano in like every room, and I had never really been a piano player per se until I got to high school, and you know that that kind of veered me towards keyboards, so it was it was a really cool transition too because everything was turning in to keyboard oriented music at that time too, you know, like with the time and prints and so all you, that so stuff. So. so you were all up into the Minneapolis sound back in PA? Oh man. Uh-huh. I was I was pretty much you would have swore I was from Minneapolis when you <laughs> all right. if you'd have met me in Pittsburgh and you were from Minneapolis, you would have been like, Man, you, you sure you're not from like, you know, North Side or something right. like <laughs> you know, I was I was definitely I was definitely in Minneapolis, just, I, I was tripping on Minneapolis, mm-hmm. you know, so when I got a chance to come out here and uh, really do things, you know, 
that was that was the biggest blessing anybody could have ever given me you know so how did that uh, all arise in you coming out to Minneapolis um wow it was like i uh i met a guy um his name is Keith Allen uh he was a friend of a friend of mine and this this guy just basically introduced us over the phone and we had never talked to each other or anything and we just kind of hit it off on the phone just just real cool you know he was he was a real down to earth cat and and uh he just, he just said man why don't you come out and check out the city for a couple of weeks you know i'll put you up and you know just check it out see if you like it and if you do then how about you just come on out here and stay for a little while and see if it see if you can make something happen so i flew on out there and I stayed with him for a couple of weeks. And uh, the last two days that I was there, uh, we went to this to this nightclub called the River Riverview Supper Club, uh, and it was over in North Minneapolis. And we were just over there, and it was funny because there was this guy standing all the way down at the end of the club, and he was bobbing his head. You know, he had this little hat on. You know, and I said, man, only one cat in the whole wide world bobs his head like that. I said, uh-huh. That's that's Jelly Bean Johnson. <laughs> you know, and you couldn't even see his face or anything. All I saw was the back of his head, and I was like, man, that's him. Right. And my boy was like, nah, man, that ain't him. So we went over there, and it was Bean, you know, and I had a tape, and Bean, Bean decided to listen to the tape after uh, after the show. And he listened to the tape, and he just said, man, what are you doing tomorrow? You know, what are you doing tomorrow night? I was like, whatever you want me to do, bro. Whatever you need, I'm here. I'm there. So he said, man, just be down here same time tomorrow. So I came down the next night, and he brought down, uh, he's he's my best friend now, uh, this guy, his name is Popeye, uh, James James Popeye Greer. He brought Pop down. I met Pop, and then after the after the gig, Terry Lewis came rolling up, you know, and I sat in the car with Terry, and I let Terry hear some songs and stuff, and man, shoot, just to just to see those three cats, right? You know, was a trip, man. And that right there, all I did was I flew back home, I packed my clothes, and I came back to Minneapolis. <laughs> I never went back, right? You know, so yeah, that that's a great. Uh... You know, great story you, you brought up there. Yeah, yeah. man. You know, and, and then uh, you know you 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 mentioned uh, all the production work you've been working with Jelly Bean and Flight Time, and mm-hmm. um, you know the thing is you've got, and I'm really excited about this. You are working on your own record. Yeah. Um, which I got to tell you, you know, I was talking to Jelly Bean a couple days ago, mm-hmm. and he said you got to hear Chance sing. He goes, Chance has a great voice, <laughs> so. Uh, so people got some high expectations out there. So why don't, why don't you talk about, you know, putting your own record together after being in so many different bands and, and what what is some of the sounds like? Um, well, it's going to be a, uh, I'd say, you know, since I, since my main influences have been like the Minneapolis sound and, and, uh, a lot of R and B stuff, you know. Plus, I'm I'm really influenced by jazz too. You know, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, Billie Holiday and uh, Dizzy Gillespie, and you know, just a lot of different influences. I mean, anything between Dizzy Gillespie and and Stevie Wonder, and, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, and you come into the Minneapolis sound, and you know, it's sort of a it's sort of a mixture of all, you know, of all those different characteristics, you know, and uh, it's going to be funky, though. It's going to definitely be funky, mm-hmm. you know. I'm gonna have like a little jazz twinge on there, you know, a little sort of like a, a little bit of bebop type, uh, you know, a little scatting and stuff like that, you know. It's going to be pretty cool, you know. I'm trying to. Uh, Trying to get as many cats as I can on it. I want to get Monty on it. I want to get Bean on it. They'll definitely be on the record. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirk will definitely be on the record. Yeah, he even uh, played about 
15 seconds of what you worked uh, over the studio. Oh, did he? He, he was playing it on the air, so we yeah. got a little preview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. that sounded funky. Yeah, man. We was just messing around, man. Right. Coming up with some stuff. It was hot. Was that you playing bass on it too? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So he just he just did the drums and I did everything else. So Ooh. you know, so it was it was fun, man. I'm gonna go home and listen to that tonight. You know? Yeah. He surprised me with that one. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. He had it bumping, man. Right. So yeah, it's like I'm just trying to get some stuff done and, you know, piece it together the way that I really want to get it. You know, I'm not going to rush it or anything. Cause it was messed up because I gave people a date the last time I said I was going to put this record together, and, and it didn't come out that way because I was I was going in so many different directions, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to just find one nice direction to go into and just stick with that, you know. So this direction that I have now is really cool. You know, so uh, uh, I can I can definitely say you know be prepared for it. It's gonna be hot, right? It's so so hot. it'll be happening on its own time and hopefully on um, soon. Yeah, and let's see. We're, we're gonna get into some music and come back and talk with Chance. But uh, you worked on with another great musician who you guys uh, are friends with, Ronnie Baker Brooks. Oh man! And you worked out uh, on about four or five tracks on his record "Take Me With You." Yeah. Um. So what was it like working with Ronnie and having Jelly Bean? Take us into the studio working on those tracks. Oh, man. Well, you know, see, me and Bean go back, you know, we go back, man. So it's like working with Bean is, is just like working with my brother. He he basically is my brother, man. I'll do anything in the world for him. And he called me in on, um, uh, on Ronnie's stuff, and, and, um, and we just got in the studio, and, you know, with Michael Bland on drums and, and Sonny Thompson on bass and, you know, and me on keys, man, and it was just, it was, it was so funky. I was like, man, is this, this is going to be a blues record? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, I was like, man, this is some funky stuff to be on a blues record, man. Uh -huh. You know, but I was like, wow, man, it was just so cool, you know, being in there with all those cats. Because actually me and Sonny and Mike and Ronnie, it, we had never played together before, you know, so... That was just, it was the bomb. It was so, the so bomb. So did it take a while for you guys to, to get get greased and everything like that, or man, it happened right away? it was like, man, we were cutting like, we were cutting like two songs a day, Uh huh. you know. We were cutting like two songs a day. We just got in there, he ran it down, you know. I would find my little spot, and, you know, and Mike would find his spot, and, you know, Sonny would find his. Right. And we just it. hit the tape and went on with it. And it's got a nice picture of you, Sonny, Jellybean, Ronnie, and uh, Popeye, and, and Nate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was, that was just some amalgamated funk right there, bro. That was just, that was the bomb, you know. So uh, we're, we're going to hit us uh, with one of the tracks off the record. You're talking about oh, cool. funk, funk on a blues record. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, Flavor of the Week. Yeah. From uh, Ronnie Baker Brooks. Take me with you. You can go to RonnieBakerBrooks.com. And he uh, he may be in Montreal this week, so uh, check his website for the tour dates. We got a lot of fans up in Canada, so cool. um, we'll come back and talk with Chance Howard. But first, this is the magic happened up in Minneapolis. And playing the wicked keys right there. Great, great musician, Stanley Chance Howard, who, uh, as you know, is also a member of the time. And uh, besides your own great production work, why don't, why don't you talk about uh, your coming into the time? And, uh, you know, you've been there quite a while, too. So, so how, how did that work out? Wow. It's, I've been with the time, I'd say, I'd say on and off about, it's probably going on about 11, 11, 12 years now, somewhere around there now. Um, uh, that happened through, actually through Jelly Bean. Um, Bean had called me back when the, uh, when the Pandemonium album came out and 
as, as a lot of people know, you know, Jimmy and Terry had quit the band and, and Jesse was gone too. And at that time they were just getting ready to go over to Japan and they needed, they needed some, uh, some fill in guys. And they called me up and, uh, let me see who was it. It was me, uh, Derek Allen, they call him DOA. He was a bass player. He was, uh, he was Janet Jackson's, uh, bass player, uh, on the Rhythm Nation tour. Mm-hmm. And then there was uh, Bobby Gonzalez, Bobby G, who was uh, Karen White's guitar player, and uh, Eric Benet's guitar player, and a couple other acts, too. And, um, uh, and then there's Morris Hayes. That's my, that's, my, that's my dog right there. Yeah, Is he on tour with Maceo right now? Yeah, he's oh, on okay. with Maceo right now. Okay. So yeah. Will, Will Bowwear's not touring with him? Or they What's got that? A, the, his normal keyboardist isn't touring? Maceo's, or or they just had another keyboardist. Um, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't even know. Right. I don't even know, man. But uh, all I know is he he told me he was going out with Maceo. Well, jump on that. Yeah. 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 So he he knows he knows the deal. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so so getting back to Japan. Yeah. So yeah. we um uh they called us up. We we went over to Paisley and we rehearsed for about two weeks, and we were on a plane on our way as the time. <laughs> right. To uh, to Japan, and it was funny because at that point, I was just a ghost player. I was a ghost keyboard player, which means you know I'm in the back, I'm backstage. I wasn't even on stage. Yeah, because I didn't see in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a ghost, and uh, it's funny because even in that in that in that uh, video, Jerome makes a reference when he says something about uh, there's uh, there's six of us on stage in a ghostly seven oh. that wants to know what you want to do next, boys. You know? Right. So, but, uh, you know, I was backstage doing that. And then a couple of years went by where they weren't doing anything. And then when they put it back together, they had a guy, Kevin or Keith. I can't remember his last name, but his name was Keith. He was a keyboard player. And, and then he had to go. And Jelly Bean called me up, said, uh, "Hey, bro, I need you, bro. <laughs> you know, you know how Bean is, right? You uh, know, he said, I need you, little brother. What you, what you doing?" I said, "Man, I had just came off a tour. I, I didn't even want to go on tour anymore. You know, I was, I had just gotten married, and my son was just born, and everything, and I didn't really. I had told everybody that I didn't want to be out on the road, and he said, uh." You know, but I need you, man. I said, well, I got your back, bro, no matter what. So what you need? He said, I need you on the plane <laughs> tomorrow. You know, we're leaving for a month. You know, I said, well, <laughs> okay, my wife's going to kill me. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I got you. So uh, I, I, next thing you know, I was in the time again. That was it, man. I've been out, I've been out with them now, I'd say, I'd say straight for about seven, eight years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I I saw you at BB King's uh, in New York City, and always smoking the band. But you know, I brought a musician friend of mine, Mystic Bowie, and in the middle of the concert, oh yeah, in the middle of the concert, one thing he said, he said, "Man, that guy is playing the 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 keys, making sounds out of there," and he was picking up on your playing. Uh. And uh, that that was kind of interesting, you know, because you know everybody has their different take of the stage, but he was focusing on you. Oh wow. So, you know, he's the man. Yeah, so he he was digging you. Talk about what, what you what you bring to the times state setup, maybe um, equipment wise, and what have you been adding to the sound that's been different from past years? Wow, I mean, the only thing that's different is um, uh, instead of using the OB8 keyboard that was basically used on all of. The Times records back in that uh, back in the day, and and pretty much all the Prince records back in the day, he mainly used this one keyboard, which was called the OB8, and we had it out on the road with us a few times. Um, I had one, and Monty had one on his side, but they're real delicate keyboards, so they broke a lot, so we couldn't have them out with us anymore. So I wound up using. I, I turned Morris on to a uh, new keyboard 
uh, called the Nord Lead, uh, that we could get those same sounds and, you know, and we could tweak them and get them, get them fatter than the OB-8 pretty much, you know. So I'm using a Nord Lead and I'm using a, a, a PC-88, Kurzweil PC-88, you know, on stage. I'm using that just for, like, strings and organs, mm-hmm. stuff like that, just organ grinder, you know. And uh, But the Nord Lead, that's my baby there. I love that. I love that thing. I love it for the road. I love it for what what it what it does for the time. It's a great keyboard. Do you, you do know. you travel with the keyboards yourself, or you guys have them all set up? Uh, there? That's our keyboard. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Nords. Uh, the Nords. Both of them are ours. And uh, let me see. Monty has a PC. No, he has a, a JP eight uh, thousand that he's using too. But um, the Nord leads, man. Those are. Those are some those are some kick ass uh, keyboards, man. Right, they're no joke. So, so to the time, um, I'm sure we'll be busy this spring and summer doing a lot of dates. And w- when do you go back out? Uh, we go back out on the 11th. I know we're doing, we're doing the Tom Joyner morning show. Oh, that's show. right. Yeah, yeah, we got you, that. You did, you, then, did, you did that uh, a couple years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, that's always fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's real cool. We got that, I, I think, and then um, so get getting the fellows up that early. <laughs> is it a tough job? In, in fact, it's so funny because doing the Tom Joyner morning show, uh-huh. it's it's so wild because you wake up at about three in the morning and you get out there to the show, and when you come out on stage, it's packed. Right. You know, <laughs> it's like a sold out concert. Right. You know, it's five in the morning, and it doesn't even feel like five in the morning. Once you feel that energy mm-hmm. from the crowd, it feels like we're playing at about 10, 10 11 o'clock at night. Right, right. So you totally forget what time it is. You know, the lights are flashing, and people are dancing, and, you know, it's a trip, man. Yeah. But it's so cool. I love doing that show. Yeah. I, I, I remember it. listening to you uh, last time, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that was incredible as well. So, yeah. hey, you know, a lot, a lot of, um, you know, we spoke with Kirk about this, but you know, musicians have been talking. There's been about three or four references during the interviews the past couple of weeks about Wednesday night at Jasmine's. And, oh, and really? How, how much people are digging it? Oh, cool. And, uh, you've been involved w- with the crew out there on Jasmine's. What, what exactly goes on, and and uh, what are you, what are you doing up there yourself? Well, I'm, um, you know, with me and Kirk, uh, we've got this group. Uh, it's called Conversation Piece. Uh, like you said, it's every Wednesday night. And um, we basically just put it together as sort of like, you know, just some funky musicians that just wanted something to do on Wednesdays. And we never thought it was going to take off like this, you know, but everybody's really digging it, you know. So it's it's been real hot, man. Um uh it's it's me playing bass keyboards and bass and uh, singing lead and Kirk is on drums and singing background. I got Walter Chancellor on sax and he's singing background. I'm making him sing. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's bad too, man. He ain't no joke. Uh-huh. And then um uh I got uh, a good friend of ours, uh Todd Burrell, uh keyboard player, man, he's awesome, man. And uh, I got him singing background, and I got my friend George Scott on guitar. And uh, he's not singing, but, you know, he's doing a little pretty boy thing, the guitar, you know. You know how guitar <laughs> players are, man. They right, got to man. be the pretty boy and stuff. So he's doing that end of it, man. But it's it's incredible, man. And it's funny because we don't make a lot of money doing that gig. Mm-hmm. And it's not about the money. It's about just coming down there and just getting funky. You know, so and that, just enjoying it. So, so that's when, when, when it's afternoon time and you're thinking about it. That's that's when you get excited. One of those kind of gigs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, I can't wait to get down there and just get started. You know, and that's that's what we're doing, man. And you know, we're going to start doing the same thing. You know, hopefully on Thursdays we're going to start the same thing, uh, and you know, just kind of put a different twist to it. You know, I'm thinking about doing, starting up a uh, sort of like a Showtime at the Apollo thing, 
and incorporating that into uh, Thursday nights with with this other band. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. bring so, out some of the new talent. Yeah, know? yeah. You know, so we want to do. I want to. I want to just kind of you know, uh, just fill up the envelope there. You know, stretch the envelope, whatever the phrase is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but well, yeah. Yeah, well, well. In respect to you, uh, I had St. Paul Peterson on, and I don't know how we got into some conversation about. Well, he was talking about the synth bass, and he Paul said, "Paul is the man." He, was, he said he came to check out you at at Jasmine's, and he went back out on tour to do a gig in New York with Alita Adams, uh. and Alita Adams like, "What got into you?" With because he was doing the synth bass, uh. and he said, "I had to take a few lessons." <laughs> <laughs> and he mentioned you in the interview and, you know, your oh. name and everything. So, oh, you know, man, you, you're doing things right, bro. Oh, yeah. man, that's, ooh, that is a blessing there, man, because that man is no joke. Right. I mean, I've, I've grown up just just totally tripping out on, on, on Paul, man. I mean, ever since, ever since, like, you know, rich man and the family and, even back when he was with the time and stuff, man, I was like, "Wow, dude!" You know, and I mean, his his uh, his nephew Jason is a, is like he's like my little brother. Mm -hmm. You know, we were out together when we did the solo tour, and um, uh, you know, so I was I was the musical director for solo, and I had him and and uh, little Roger uh, little Roger Troutman Jr. right as my keyboard players, and wow, man, it's those guys, man, just all of them, all the ones that I just mentioned right. now, man, yeah. they're just magnificent cats, man. So if you just tuned in and listened, uh, been listening to the interview, this is Stanley Chance Howard, who, uh, as you know, keyboardist and vocalist with Morris Day and the Time, and I like to say the Time because that's how I grew up, knowing yeah, the Time, yeah. but no disrespect to Morris, but it's, I hear you. it's the Time. And uh, out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, he's there working uh creating that magical uh music and you're gonna have to stop by on the show again so uh oh, yeah. when that record's ready to drop yeah we'll man do a whole uh we'll do a whole feature on that as well yeah true. and if and if you just tuned in this will be re-aired uh for three days and three nights on the 24 7 outlet we do all you have to do is go to the upper room with joe kelly dot com uh kelly spelled e-y at the end and uh Sign up for the mailing list and just keep uh, abreast of the schedule there. So I'll ask you one final question, off the wall question maybe. But uh, you remember the first concert that you ever attended? The first concert that I ever attended was Prince concert, um, Alphabet City, in oh, okay. Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. So it was a cool, cool tour. Oh man! Right. That that right there. That just. I was already doing the Minneapolis thing, and then to go to go and see the man doing his thing, right? You know, that was just the icing on the cake for me. So he's checking out your thing. I understand he's come out to Jasmine's too, right? Yeah, he's yeah. been out, man. He's been out a lot lately, and it's 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 an it's an inspiration, man. It's an inspiration beyond my wildest dreams. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, you know, just to have that guy, you know, just just coming out. And 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 just showing the love, you know. What I mean, what more could you ask for? Right. He's, he's the man. He's the man. All right. You know? So, so we're gonna uh, look forward to that solo CD and um, have fun at rehearsal tonight. Oh yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, come out and check out Chance Howard and Conversation Peace Wednesdays at Jasmine's in, in Minneapolis and uh, Thursday nights. Look out for the information. We'll let you know here on the upper room. So people can get you for two nights out there, and yeah, 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 man, come on out, come on out, check it out. It's funky, guaranteed it's funk, right? Guaranteed yeah. funk, unadulterated, right? <laughs> so hey, we'll get into what, another track you uh, wrote uh, for Alexander O'Neill, mm -hmm. um, "Shame." Oh yeah, shame yeah. On me. How, how'd you develop on that? I actually wrote that song uh, for a demo for a friend of mine, and. Um, he he got strep throat and couldn't sing it, and I wound up singing singing the song and everything. And I let Jimmy and Terry hear it, and uh, Jimmy and Terry was like, "Man, that's that's Alex uh -huh. all day." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> no arguments there." <laughs> you know, you still keeping uh, you still keeping contact with Flight Time? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love those cats over there, man. We, you know, we stay in contact and, uh, you know, it's like I'm doing my thing and they're doing theirs and we just kind of meet up in the middle. And, right. You know, stuff like that. So it's real good. So this is from, uh, Chance Howard's days over at the flight time studios with Alexander O'Neill, all true man. And, uh, Shame on me. So I want to thank you, Chance, so much. Great to have you on, definitely. Oh, man, thank yeah. you, man. I know thank the you. listeners are out there happy, too. So this is Chance Howard, Alexander O'Neill, Shame on me. Mm-hmm. 